Boart, but they are shaking things up at the top. So clear the dust away if you could early on and project what that might mean for the company. Well, it looks like there'll be a new captain at the helm of Boat Longy. So looking at CEO of previous, uh, the previous CEO of Newmont Mining, which of course is one of the world's largest gold companies and listed on the New York Stock Exchange. But if we have a look at Boat Longy, the key, uh, the key uh, problem for them has been the weakness that we've seen in that mining space. And if we have a look at where Boat's uh, earnings primarily come from, well, there's a very strong uh, exposure to exploration spend and we know that small cap companies explorers are still doing it pretty tough in terms of raising cash and in uh, in terms of being able to do work at the moment so Boat Long you saying that while conditions have stabilized at the global mining outlook it's it's still uncertain so I guess the outlook still a little bit shaky there for Boat Boat Longy. No surprises in terms of the actual results because we did get some uh, very specific guidance from Boat Longy and they have been predicting EBITDA of between 310 to 320 million dollars. It's come out at 322 million dollars. They were predicting revenue of two billion dollars. It's come out just a little a touch higher than that. So really in line with expectations but that dividend cut that we saw from 5.6 cents down to 1 cents will be disappointing for shareholders because often that dividend payment when the share have fallen so much like Boat Longyear acts as a buffer to those capital losses and if we have a look at Boat Longyear's share price in the last year we've seen the shares dropping around about 40 percent in value so it does look like that drop continuing on market today once again uncertain conditions especially at that exploration uh, part of the cycle in terms of the mining services area. A real black mark for for Amcor the packaging group but it's been quite deft in the way it's handled that one and beaten the street absolutely right that strong Australian dollar would have been a key headwind for Amcor but if we have a look at underlying profit it did manage a rise of six percent and in fact if we strip out the currency effect doing even better than that so on a constant currency terms seeing growth of 12 percent to 342 million dollars now part of this is that we have seen raw material costs falling in the December quarter by around about six to seven percent and that would have been a positive for Amcor the developed markets are stable but really the star performer in Amcor's result comes from the emerging markets performing very strongly there and adding to uh, the strength that we've seen in these in these results. We have a look at Amcor. There had been expectations for a pretty strong profit result and that's because other packaging companies from around the globe had seen a pretty good half as well. We've seen some pretty good strength coming from the healthcare space. Um, we've seen raw material costs falling in this sector but Amcor really beating on expectations. It's dividend coming in at 18.5 cents so that's a rise of about 8 percent and Amcor is really a stock that a lot of shareholders do get into for the stable dividends and the stable earnings so the fact that we have seen the dividend rising by eight percent should be a positive for Amcor shares today. Blue Scope shares are rallying up 5.3 percent to the minute Julia uh, importantly as well the JV with the Japanese they've guided the market to that one being closed off quite soon I mean signed off on with all the regulatory approval that must create some great much needed certainty. We've seen a good uh, performance by a lot of these turnaround stocks and Blue Scope Steel is no exception today. In fact, in the last year, we've seen the shares rising around about 70% now. So it's been a star performer on the Australian market. We have a look at this particular result. We have seen a loss of $22 million, but that has narrowed quite significantly. In fact, it's very closely approaching break-even point now. And in the second half, we are expecting to see a small underlying uh, profit there. So we are expecting to see a turnaround in terms of Blue Scope. A lot of the concern around its balance sheet have eased and that's because of that joint venture with Nippon, as you mentioned, uh, Carson. That joint venture with Nippon Steel will actually see it receiving $540 million in the March quarter and that's going to alleviate most of the balance sheet concerns that the market had around Blue Scope. So Blue Scope, because of its restructure, we are starting to see an improvement in its underlying business. Yes, we have st still seen a loss here of $22 million, but it is getting closer to being in the black and we are expecting that to happen. In in the second half of the year so it does look like a good reaction to Blue Scope Steel's commentary today. Net profit soaring Julia. We have seen uh, net profit falling but actually when we have a look at the banks we usually measure it by the cash profit and in terms of cash profit terms we've seen an increase of 4.4 percent at 170 million dollars so it's basically in line with expectations but I think why the market is so positive on these results is the net interest margin mm -hmm. what we have seen is an improvement in the net interest margin and I guess for the smaller regional banks it is a little bit more difficult to compete with the big four but in the case of Bendigo and Adelaide we've seen the net interest margin rising by zero 
0.1% to 2.18%. So that's seen as a positive by the market and really reflects that when we do see a stabilization in the funding markets, that the smaller regional banks really do start to see this uplift in the net interest margin. That's a huge positive. We have a look at Bendigo and Adelaide's business. It was formed as a merger between the retail uh, Bendigo Bank and then the more wholesale Adelaide Bank back in 2007. It is more community focused. It does often struggle uh, um, competing against the big four banks and you can see that in things like the return on equity. If we have a look at the return on equity uh, on, for Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, it's around about 13%. That compares to Commonwealth Bank, which leads the pack at about 18%. And then Westpac and ANZ at about 15.5%. So Bendigo and Adelaide, I think the market really are reacting to that very positive net interest margin. It was a key reason why ANZ was sold off on Friday. But altogether, I think the banks are doing well this morning, with the exception of Commonwealth Bank, which is trading ex-dividend $1.64. We're seeing the big four rallying today. And in fact, if you strip out uh, CBA's uh, dividend performance today, or the dividend uh, of $1.64, it would actually be trading higher today. Mm. Peter.